And we'll begin with the security issues. Aaron Deutsch, our correspondent, reported to us from just outside Gaza. Shalom. Shalom, Aaron. So what has been happening with Operation Cast Lead? The IDF hit around 60 targets from the air last night throughout Gaza, though of course there's a lot of focus right now on Gaza City. At least 10 terrorists were killed in fighting with the IDF, though the number might be 12. It's not entirely clear at this point. It seems the main fighting took place in Gaza City, where according to Hamas and Islamic Jihad, a ambush was laid by the IDF for the Arab forces, which was a very successful ambush, according to the terrorists themselves. The ambush itself took place in the Sheikh Jalid neighborhood in Gaza City, and was carried out by a mix of armored forces as well as infantry, though of course the details of the operation are still rather secret. Now there was one big strike which the IAF attempted against Ahmed Jabari. He is kind of the chief of staff for Hamas. Jabari's house was bombed by the IAF, but it is believed Jabari escaped. It's unknown if any of his family was killed in the attack. At the same time, the, the Navy has been giving a lot of close support to the army, shelling Arab targets as the IDF engages Hamas. Um, in the southern Gaza Strip, a Hamas mosque was destroyed because the mosque had been used as a training camp for the Hamas fighters. Now, it's not clear what the future will hold, but there's a lot of speculation the IDF intends to expand their attacks and even take greater levels of control in the Gaza Strip. The IAF dropped leaflets throughout Gaza warning that new areas will be in danger of attack from the IDF and warning the residents to stay in their homes and avoid combat zones. It's unknown the exact current strength of the Hamas military wing. Amir Mansi, who had been the commander of the Izadin Qassam, was killed in fighting on Saturday. And this is generally viewed as being a very bad sign for Hamas. Even one of the most senior commanders is actually taking the field. So will the IDF expand its operations? It's still unknown. That's in the hands of the political echelon. But as things are looking now, the fighting is not going to end anytime soon. Now, Aaron, how about the home front? Uh, what's the situation inside Israel today? Now, on the home front, things are not going as well as they could. Uh, some rockets hit Beersheba this morning. While there were no direct injuries, seven people were treated for shock. And the rockets were fired just as school was starting when the kids would be on their way to classes. This is a very common Hamas tactic. But in Beersheba, as the attacks are happening, there is also the home front command is taking today to explain to students how to behave in case of an attack and what they should do. So hopefully any casualties can be absolutely minimized. Now we're hearing a lot of news on the diplomatic and political front. How are things looking in that arena? Now so far the political echelon is holding strong. There was a UN resolution calling for a ceasefire which the uh, Olmert government rejected immediately and unequivocally. The security cabinet met today and said Israel has a right to defend itself and that no one has the right to take that away from the Jewish state. In the cabinet's meeting, there was no final solution or timeline for the end of the operation, but, but the cabinet decided that the fighting would continue until the objectives were met. Now, Aaron, you're standing at one of the locations where the foreign press, uh, the, the journalists from all over the world are camping out. How are the foreign journalists portraying the conflict? Now, as for the foreign journalists, they have a reputation for being sympathetic to the Arabs and not so much to Israel. And... You can see that in the reporting in the current war as well. I am here in Sterot and I try to present things as a resident of Sterot and I feel like a Sterotnik and that's how I show the Korean viewers what's going on. And in Gaza, we have contacts who report from there. We try to be balanced, but the main thing is to present every single thing that occurs to our Korean viewers. When reporters don't check out stories, when they simply go with the most sensational lead they can find, uh, we pay the price, and it's very, very, very difficult to combat that. Despite the problems, Israel's been putting in a much more concerted effort to have a coherent media strategy going on to YouTube and having the different branches of the government speaking the same language. So certainly Israel's media performance has been better in this war than it was during Lebanon, too. I think that, that uh, we have to do the job of, exp you know, on the one hand, you're explaining what the truth is. On the other hand, someone is showing horrible pictures of a line of 10 children who are about to be buried. So you do the best you can with those explanations. 
Me and you are standing in a dangerous place. Just moments ago, a Qassam fell not far from here with no alarm. We heard the boom and ran up here to film. It's dangerous, but it's the right of our viewers to receive the information, and we endanger ourselves for that. Aaron Deutsch, thank you very much.